Calgo Chanel is my unapologetic part of me. She is my creativity, my love for horses, my boldness just wrapped up in one. Um, okay. The like person me? that oh, I've, always been, I've always just wanted to, you know, be able to be myself. And I'm just thankful that, you know, my mother allowed me to be myself. And uh, that's how Cowgirl Chanel was born. I knew I wanted to be a cowgirl when I first, probably when I first saw my first horse, which is uh, not even a memory. I've just loved horses my whole life. I don't even know when I started loving horses. I've just always been horse obsessed and never understood why, actually. <laughs> my grandparents both lived on farms. Um, you know, they had they had tons of farm animals. Uh, they did not grow up rich. Um, this is actually a picture of my uh, beloved grandmother. And uh, actually my, uh, my first line of wigs is named after her. It's called the Helen Collection. Um, and, uh, you know, they, she had, she had to ride a horse to school. And, you know, they just had these farms out of necessity. My uh, grandfather said that his favorite animals were horses. But unfortunately, we didn't get to bond over that before uh, he passed away. As a child, the first time I saw Black Cowboys was at uh, the Bill Pickett Rodeo. Um, that was my first rodeo that I've ever been to. And, you know, on TV and magazines, I didn't see that. And uh, actually at that Bill Pickett, a bull got into the bleachers. So that's pretty much the memory that I have and not the memory of the, the Cowboys, unfortunately. But um, yeah, you know, I knew that I was at a black rodeo. It was just when the bull got into the crowd, you know, someone had to snatch me up and run. <laughs> so now, my first horse uh, trainer that I worked with as a working student uh, was a black cowboy. His name was Cliff Salter, and he was, you know, the the first real black cowboy that I had ever met in my life. I think black cowboy culture today is popping. Um, I'm very excited about this uh, new light that the media has decided to shine on us, and. Um, I know that we have been around for a long time. Black Cowboys have been around for a long time. I know I'm, a, I know I'm first generation, but you know I, I'm a part of this. I'm a part of this movement of uh, Black Cowboys getting uh, some more light. I'm so thankful for it too. I've gotten to do some cool things. You know, I've been in commercials, gotten to do some stunt riding, gotten some uh, professional photo shoots done, um, been in some magazines well, on television. So I'm just uh, thankful just um, uh, for to... the Black Cowboy culture and uh, connecting with other Black Cowboys and cowgirls and uh, Black equipment equestrians um all over the world and just uh you know it's just great also making just the new connections with all the different people that i've made new connections with over this as well to be honest with you um in the i, I live in orange county and in my area in my county i'm probably one of the uh, very few black equestrians i really do not see a whole lot out here like i said i started off with a, a black horse trainer named cliff salter and, you know, through him, I met other black cowboys and black cowgirls that I love and I still talk to. I see them at parades, you know, you know, when the Bill Pickett Rodeo goes back to town, um, I see them there as well. You know, I do trail rides with them. So we always make everything fun. We have music, we barbecue. It's, it's, it's fantastic um, doing these uh, play dates at barrel races and uh, going, to, in a, going to the Bill Pickett and participating. So um, I always look forward to these events. What do you think is the biggest divide between the English versus Western equestrian cowboy culture? Ooh, I answer that question. <laughs> yeah, there is definitely um, a, a, a difference, but um, you know, it's uh, people want to go where they're welcome. I'm not saying that I'm not welcome at these events, but there is just something about the the English world that might be a little bit more intimidating because you don't see as many black faces there. So to me, um, you know, and the other uh, uh, black equestrians that show English and, you know, there you may be one of the very few there at your event, you know, a pioneer's road is definitely never easy. And sometimes it can be pretty intimidating, you know, but you, you know, you keep doing it, you know, uh, I do both. I mean, I love Western riding. I, I started off doing Western riding and um, that's where my foundation is. And then I got into uh, uh, English riding, which I also love. And it's actually a great foundation for my Western riding. So um, I definitely uh, love to participate in both sports. I want to encourage more African-Americans to ride English. Um, it is tons of fun. I know the outfits are way different, <laughs> wearing the breeches and tall boots, but um, I absolutely love it. Both of my horses do English and Western. So um, this gave, uh, you know, me versatility and it gave them versatility my as well. My is uh, Jasmine Wheatley. Jasmine Wheatley is uh, uh, a very, very uh, good friend of mine. I'm also a working student of hers and she inspired me to write English. 
Um, I'm definitely grateful for her. She has uh, definitely helped me win uh, uh, these ribbons back behind me. So um, she is amazing. My biggest lesson in all this is to never give up. Period in the story. Never give up. Um, I Three, can't give up on my horses. I put too much of my life into the them. Uh, my whole life is wrapped around <laughs> it. You know, I've got, you know, I drive a truck. I have a trailer. I got to go see them, um, feed them and everything. My life is just wrapped around uh -huh. how much I fall or how much I mess up, you know, uh, or, or do it, make any mistake out here. Um, you know, never give up. Like I said, I have fallen at several shows. Like I have fallen, you know, my saddle has, you know, fallen off the side of my horse. You know, I fell off at a rodeo. You know, my horse Gabriel has thrown me off before jumps at hunter jumper shows. You know, but I get back on and I finish my course. And one of those times I actually got back on, I got champion of my division. This is one of my biggest um, lessons of never give up. I'm at a hunter jumper show. I'm already nervous. Um, me and Gabriel have gone through a saga of, uh, you're not riding me like you trust me, so this isn't gonna work. So my thing about my, my, my English horse is, if you don't ride him like you trust him, He's definitely not going to trust you. So you've got to ride him like you trust him, even if you don't trust him. So it's kind of like a fake it till you make it type of thing. So super duper nervous. And he's the kind of horse that if you take your leg off of, uh, off of him before you take a jump, he's not going to take that fence because you're pretty much telling him, I'm shutting down. Everything is shutting down. I'm done. I don't want to ride. Done. So he'll be like, okay, fine. Shutting everything down. So he'll stop right before the fences. And sometimes that causes me to fall off. So at one show, this happened. He threw me off before a jump. I was embarrassed. I sat on the ground. I said, you know, like, what the heck happened? And, you know, my mom didn't even come to me, which I do appreciate that she told me later. She goes, I didn't come to you because I knew you'd be okay. And of course I was. Um, I was a little sore and I did kind of lump away from that one. But what I did was, um, you know, my trainer got on him, jumped him around and was, you know, pretty much telling me, this is you. So you need to get over this right now. So um, got back up. Got back on, boots all dirty, pants all dirty, helmet all dirty. Uh, did my course, uh, finished all my classes, and then got champion in my division. And then right then and there was like, this is why you never, you never give up.